In today's tutorial, I will show you how to use the Unsplash API to create a simple React project. This is what the final result will look like for this side project. Based on what you typed in here, it will show a list of five images that all relate to this keyword that you typed in. So in this example, I'm showing five different photos of cars. So if we scroll down, you can see all the different images. If I scroll back up, I can change this to any other keyword. And once I've typed that in, just hit submit. And now I can see five different images of food. I purposely kept this project as simple as possible to show you the basics of how to use the Unsplash API to get started with your own side project. There are two requirements for this tutorial. One is that you understand how to use the Unsplash API. If you have never used it before, I have another video on my channel that shows you the step-by-step -step process of how to use the Unsplash API. And the second requirement is that you have a basic understanding of React. Now I will switch over to the code to explain how this project was built. Also, I will leave a link in the description and in the comments with this exact code on my GitHub profile. Now I'll go through the code and explain what each line is doing. On line one, I'm importing the use state react hook. On line two, I'm just importing Axios, which is a package that allows us to easily make HTTP calls. On line three, I'm just importing a CSS file. On line eight and nine, I'm just creating some variables to hold some data that I'll explain in just a second. On line 13, this is a function that I created where we'll be making the Unsplash API call to get the photos that you saw earlier. I also left some helpful comments. This link here will bring you to the documentation for the exact API call that we'll be making here on line 20. On line 17, this is where I'm pasting my API key, but when I upload to my GitHub profile, this value will be empty, so you need to make sure you update this value with your own API key. Once you have that value populated, on line 20 is where we're making the actual Unsplash API call. This URL is the exact endpoint that we need to hit to be able to search photos using the Unsplash API. I added three query parameters that we need. And the first one is the client ID, which is just going to be our API key. The second query parameter is just a search query or what we're searching for using the Unsplash API. And the last query parameter is the per page. And this is gonna specify how many items that we wanna get back from the Unsplash API. If we go to the link that I have commented here, it will explain more about this specific API call. Here, you can see for our query, we're just passing in the search term. And then for the per page, this is gonna specify the number of items that we get back per page. Going back to the code, once we have our URL set up properly, we will now use Axios to make a GET request to this exact endpoint. On line 21, I printed out the results that we get back from the Unsplash API. If I switch over to my project, we can see the results here. And for each image, you get back all this different type of data. And the one that I'm using here in this example is the URLs field here, where it has links to different types of the image. So you can have like a small version of the image, a full version, and like so on. Just to note quickly, the results that we get back is just an array of five different items, and this will be important in one second. Going back to the code, based on the array of results that we get back, I'm just storing it inside this variable called URLs display. Just to recap, on line 20, we're just making an Unsplash API call to search for photos based on the search query. And then on line 23, we're just storing the array of results into the URLs display variable. Scrolling down, this is all the UI logic to display the actual image. On line 37, this is just an input box where the user would type in this search query. So in the previous example, I just typed in car or food, and then I saw all the images related to that specific search query. Looking back on line 37, I just have the on change handler, and each time we update the input box, I'm just gonna update the variable that I called search query uh, with the value that the user has typed in. On line 41, this is just a simple button with an on-click handler that would just call the get unsplash photos functions from above. On line 47, I'm just gonna be iterating through the URLs to display array, which has the five images from the unsplash API call. And based on the URLs that we get back, I'll just display the image here. Going back to the project, if we look at the console, my URLs display array has each of these items that you see here. And for each item, I'm just displaying the value that you see here. If you want to show a full version of this file instead of a small version, you can just go back to the project and change this to full instead of small and just hit save. Going back to the project, you can now see all the images are going to be full images and not the small version of the image. I will change it back for now, but that's just to show you how you can make changes based on which image you want to show. Another change that you could make is that if you wanted to show more images instead of five, you could just change this to let's say like 15 and hit save. And now if we go back and hit submit again, we can now see that it will show us 15 different images that relate to food. And that is the end of this Unsplash API project tutorial. Hopefully you have a better idea of how to use the Unsplash API in your own projects. And if you found this video helpful in any way, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more content.